Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Connecting Kids to Coverage, Driving Enrollment by Highlighting Dental Coverage webinar. I'm Erin Seidler, and I work closely with the Connecting Kids to Coverage team. As you know, it's National Children's Dental Health Month, and we're pleased to provide you with resources to actively take part in connecting families to dental health services. We've had over 300 people sign up for this webinar today, so we are excited to share our oral health resources and let our speakers present their strategies for helping children maintain healthy smiles. Lori Norris, Senior Policy Advisor and Coordinator at CMS Oral Health Initiative will walk us through the agenda and get us started. Lori? Thank you, Erin. Uh, and welcome, everyone. We're really super pleased that you could join us for this webinar today. Um, just as a reminder, uh, children enrolled in Medicaid or CHIP have access to comprehensive oral health services, including checkups, x-rays, fluoride treatments, dental sealants, fillings, and lots more. And our experience has shown that raising awareness about these benefits can help support your outreach efforts and motivate parents to enroll their children in Medicaid or CHIP. So our speakers today will give you an overview of quite a variety of resources that you can use to educate families about dental health and about the availability of dental coverage in Medicaid and CHIP. Um, and we'll also be talking about how you can pair dental coverage and Medicaid and CHIP enrollment to increase both. More kids get dental coverage and more kids get dental care. You will also hear about some creative strategies uh, that community-based organizations have used, and one of those involves the tooth fairy. Um, so stay tuned for that. And um, at the very end, I will give you information about a number of resources that are, are available to you from CMS. Next slide. So we wanted to start off um, by hearing from you. Uh, we have a poll question that we would like you to respond to. Um, have you incorporated oral health messaging into your outreach and enrollment efforts? So if you could select one of the two uh, choices here just by clicking on the radio button on your screen. Okay, let's close the poll and see. Terrific. So we're just about split down the middle. 48% of you have already incorporated oral health messaging. So today's webinar will be um, a reminder um, and validation for you in terms of what you've already been doing, and hopefully you'll get some, some good new ideas. Um, but 52% of you haven't done it yet, so you are in the right place um, to learn how to get started with that and how that can pay off for you. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes familiarizing you with efforts ongoing at CMS to improve children's oral health. Um, and this first slide uh, is just a reminder uh, about how tooth, can, tooth decay can really be a serious condition for children, especially low-income children. 80% uh, of the disease is in 20% of the children. And the 20% of the children that have 80% of the disease tend to be low-income kids, the kids we are trying to reach. Um, you may not be aware that it is a bacteria-based disease. It's transmissible. You catch it from someone. And usually babies and very young children catch it from their caregivers or their siblings who already have it. It's most serious when it develops at an early age, before age three. And most children, um, over half, have had at least one cavity by age five. But for low-income children, the percentage tends to be much higher. And once you have it, it can last a lifetime. And it does have consequences. It causes pain, interference with development and eating, and other serious infections, um, as well as uh, interference with, with learning and um, other issues. It can also be very expensive. Uh, children sometimes need to go to the operating room, uh, especially when they're very young, to get their tooth decay treated. And that can cost between nine and $15,000 per episode. But the good news is this disease is almost entirely preventable. So that's what we're focusing on at CMS right now. Next slide, please. 
Um, this will give you a sense of um, how many, what proportion of children enrolled in Medicaid um, receive a dental service um, and how that has been trending over the last 15 years. So here we have data from 2000 through 2014. And the, the top line, the blue line, represents what proportion of kids are getting any dental service in the measurement year. Um, and prevention is represented in the red line, and treatment services is represented in the green line. So as you can see, um, there's been steady progress, um, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. Um, we're still reaching only half um, of our children who are enrolled. Next slide, please. So many times, um, you folks out in the states really like to know, how is my state doing? So this slide shows you on a state-by-state -state basis um, what proportion of children are getting a preventive dental service. And this is our most recent data that we have available from 2014. The red line in the middle is our national average, which is 45%. Our high performers are over on the left. You can see that Vermont and Connecticut, Washington State, those are um, doing a pretty good job at reaching uh, close to two-thirds of their kids. On the other hand, on the right-hand side, you see our really low performers. For example, Wisconsin, Florida, and North Dakota um, still are not even reaching 30% of their kids. Next slide. We have an oral health initiative going on right now. Um, and it's been, we launched it in 2011. Um, it uh, has set a goal for every single state to improve by 10 percentage points, not 10%, but 10 percentage points, uh, the proportion of kids that get um, a preventive dental service. And this will give you a sense of the improvement rate uh, going on in your state. I see my, my green lines have migrated a little bit south here. Um, the five-year goal is supposed to be up at the 10 percentage point mark and the four-year goal at the 8 percentage point mark. Um, but in any event, you can see that only a few states up on the left-hand side um, are really making strong improvement. Um, and unfortunately, we do also have some states over on the right-hand side who've been going backwards. They've been losing ground. Um, we are working uh, very uh, concertedly, um, especially with our low, lower performing states, uh, to help support their improvement. Next slide. So I mentioned we have an oral health initiative going on uh, to improve by 10 percentage points um, the proportion of kids who get a preventive dental service. Um, originally, that oral health initiative was set to expire in 2015. And we were hoping that everybody would reach their goal by then. But as you've just seen, uh, very few states have reached their goal. So just last month, we announced an extension of the oral health initiative for three more years uh, to 2018. So I think this is important for you all to know um, because states are going to continue to put effort and energy um, into reaching more kids um, over the next three years and to improving the percentage of kids that get to the dentist. So that's my framing. Um, next, we'll turn to our other presenters. Um, next slide, please. Our first presenter is Jane Grover. She's the Director of the Council on Access Prevention and Interprofessional Relations with the American Dental Association. And we're really pleased to have her here today. Jane? Thank you very much. Well, again, I am very grateful to be here today. Um, I've been with the American Dental Association approximately three years, and before that, my professional background is being a dental director and a clinician uh, at an FQHC uh, in the Midwest for 12 years. My uh, dental background and uh, public health degree are from uh, Michigan. Next slide, please. So I'm very happy to give an overview of ADA campaigns that provide education to families on the importance of oral health. We've got several key initiatives uh, designed by the ADA which support outreach to families for access to oral health services. I'm going to focus on some of the more prominent ones which are overseen by our communications team and our CAPER Council on Access Prevention and Interprofessional Relations which is within the Division of Government Affairs we're also going to talk about our Action for Dental Health campaign, 
which is a series of initiatives which show dentists making a difference in their communities. Next slide, please. So the Age One Dental Visit is a key message that is not only supported by the ADA House of Delegates, but represents an aspect of interprofessional relations of the Council on Access Prevention and Interprofessional Relations. This message is also supported by the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Association of Pediatric Dentistry. Next slide, please. In 2012, the Ad Council and Partnership for a Healthy Mouth, Healthy Lives a coalition of 36 organizations and the ADA, launched the first ever joint public service campaign to address children's oral health. The campaign targets parents and caregivers of children under the age of 12 with an emphasis on low-income, African-American, and Hispanic populations due to the disproportionate level of dental disease suffered by these populations. The ADA House of Delegates has strongly supported this campaign with funding approval through the association's operating budget. The campaign's objectives, based on research conducted by the Ad Council, is to educate the target audience about the importance of a healthy mouth and motivate them to take the steps that help their children achieve a healthy mouth. The call to action is to brush two minutes twice per day, or two men, two X. This comprehensive integrated campaign includes television, billboards, social media, radio, and online content. Phase one of the campaign was from 2012 to 2014 with a press conference and public service announcements delivered to 33,000 media outlets. In 2014, the Children's Oral Health PSA received the Ad Council's top creative award of the year, the Gold Bell for Creative Excellence selected from PSAs developed by 40 volunteer agencies that year. Engagement measures show website analytics and social media metrics. 2016 metrics show 2.8 million visits to the campaign website 2Min2X with 34,000 Facebook followers and 295,000 video views. 2013 and 2015 partnerships with Scholastic Publishing resulted in children's oral health material, reaching 190,000 teachers and 5.7 million families, with a 19% increase in awareness, from 53 to 71% among Spanish-speaking parents. Next slide, please. National Children's Dental Health Month has served as the premier health awareness campaign each February since 1949. This observance has helped promote oral health education to children, parents, caregivers, and educators, empowering people to be good stewards and advocates for their own oral health. National Children's Dental Health Month, or NCDHM as we call it, is an extremely popular oral health education campaign as evidenced by the high volume of posters and materials that have been distributed over the years. In the past three years alone, 648,750 posters have been distributed. And for 2016, 75,000 posters were ordered with the 60,000 English language posters claimed by the middle of November, 2015. The oral health messages reach millions of people in communities across the country and at numerous armed services bases. Posters are distributed to dentist members and other health provider agencies at no charge. Posters are also sent to Head Start programs, elementary and middle and high schools, health departments, community clinics, museum exhibits, patient reception rooms, child care centers, and dental education institutions. In addition to the posters, National Children's Dental Health Month activities include coloring and essay contests, dental screenings, health fairs and presentations done by local team members. To ensure appropriate health literacy considerations, the CAPER National Advisory on Health Literacy in Dentistry reviews all of the NCDHM materials. Next slide. Thank you. Give Kids a Smile is an ADA designed campaign which has enjoyed many years of success since it began in 2002. More than 1,500 GCAS events have been held this year alone throughout the country, providing dental services to more than 300,000 underserved patients. Since the program began, more than 5 million children have received care 
through Give Kids a Smile Day activities. Next slide, please. And this is just one example of dental school engagement and support for Give Kids a Smile activities. Virtually every dental school in the country participates in at least one Give Kids a Smile Day activity. Next slide, please. The Health Policy Institute, led by Dr. Marco Vujicek, compiles comprehensive analyses of the key aspects of the oral health care system and provides reports that help inform policy decisions. Their latest publication, a state-by-state -state analysis, shows tremendous gains being achieved in access to care for Medicaid children. Between the years of 2000 and 2013, all but one state saw an increase in the percentage of Medicaid children who had at least one dental visit within the past year. In fact, Texas Medicaid children are actually more likely to visit a dentist than their privately insured counterparts. This points to the need for policymakers to continue implementing evidence-based reforms in Medicaid since the states with the largest gains in access to dental care among Medicaid children, Texas, Connecticut, and Maryland, implemented multi-pronged reforms that actually worked. These reforms include provider and beneficiary outreach, improvement and reimbursement strategies, and the streamlining of administrative procedures. To engage dental providers in the Medicaid program, the ADA Medicaid Initiative and the Action for Dental Health has provided boot camps around the country for dentists. These sessions give perspective on medical necessity and documentation, as well as overall program compliance. There has also been a free online CE program developed and currently online for dentists discussing the topics of Medicaid participation and program compliance. And I want to report that uh, since it's been up in the last two weeks, over 300 dentists have taken that CE course. Next slide, please. The Dental Quality Alliance provides key insights as the improvement in the areas of outreach and enrollment is achieved by ensuring high quality in the measurement of specific areas such as prevention. The DQA represents the dental community coming together to define quality in the context of population health. These measures represent a standardized way to prove that Medicaid is providing high quality care and we look forward to collaborating on the development of the access monitoring review plans to ensure they're appropriate for pediatric dental services. Next slide, please. The American Dental Association collaborated with the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, as well as the National Maternal and Child Resource Center on a national consensus statement regarding the importance of oral health during pregnancy. This statement reflects the commitment shown by the ADA for this special population. The 2015 ADA House of Delegates intensified this commitment by adopting two resolutions promoting oral health services throughout all nine months of pregnancy. Next slide. The Action for Dental Health is a campaign of eight initiatives which was introduced in 2013. And since then, four priorities have emerged within these initiatives that have special relevance to ADA and its members. These initiatives are Medicaid, emergency room referral, community water fluoridation, and the Community Dental Health Coordinator Program. The CDHC program is an ADA-developed educational training program which partners a community health worker curriculum with a dental assisting or dental hygiene curriculum to maximize outreach for dental services to vulnerable populations. Currently, there are 37 CDHCs in eight states with another 58 students in the educational pipeline. These professionals engage in community-based oral health promotion and outreach to connect people to care. Next slide, please. I appreciate the opportunity to participate in this webinar and present the activities of the ADA regarding oral health promotion and access to dental care strategies. Please contact me if you have any questions. And pictured here, we have three of our CDHCs in the great state of New Mexico. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane. Um, it's wonderful to hear about everything the American Dental Association is doing to encourage people to get the dental care they need. Um, and I'm hoping that our listeners uh, notice that there are lots and lots of activities underway, uh, and every state has a chapter of the American Dental Association and their own state dental association that would be a good contact uh, for you and a good partner um, in hooking up 
to connect kids to coverage through dental care. So our next speaker, next slide please, um, is Matt Jacob. Uh, Matt is the Director of Communications and Outreach at the Children's Dental Health Project, which is a national organization supporting children's oral health. Matt? Thanks, Lori, um, and I'm really pleased to be with uh, all of you today, and, and my thanks to CMS for asking me to participate. Next slide, please. So I want to give you a little bit of a test drive. I guess that's the best term for it. Uh, for a web portal that we launched this month called End Cavities, and um, it's a website that is really aimed at people like all of you. Um, I think you're the sort of perfect uh, sort of subset of people we're trying to reach, uh, people at the local level, state level, who are working to help parents and caregivers learn more about coverage, uh, get people signed up, connect them with the appropriate uh, people, try and help them with access to care. And, uh, and so state and local health and children's advocates are really a prime audience for this website, which is really not aimed directly at parents. It's really aimed more at medical dental professionals and health and children's advocates who work with them and, and interface with them and hopefully advocate for them. Next slide, please. This is a happy photograph, but this is not a happy time to be number one. And um, tooth decay is the number one chronic disease of childhood. Uh, and, and that's something we can't be happy about. Normally, being number one is, is something to cheer about. This is not. And the main reason is because this is a preventable disease, as, as Jane noted. Um, so we've got a lot of work to do. And hopefully, together, we can help do it. Uh, you know, we want to keep kids cavity free. And this site, I should mention, focuses on preschool age kids. So children from birth through age five. My apologies for, for the fire department that is saying hello to everybody out there. We're really aiming at changing the conversation here because we want um, parents and caregivers to understand that they actually have a lot more control over whether their uh, infants and toddlers and young kids get cavities than they may think. Uh, there have been surveys in recent years, and we did one just in December, which found that uh, roughly 43% of adults felt that they had little or, or, or no control over whether they get a cavity. And we've really got to build some understanding and work with them to understand that there are steps they can take, both for their own mouths and for the mouths of their children to keep their mouths and teeth healthy. Next slide, please. So some of the resources you can find on endcavities.org are talking points on early childhood cavities, uh, some fact sheets on different issues. We have multiple infographics that I think you, you may find very useful. Um, there are videos, brief videos, less than a minute each, um, that talk about some of the key issues uh, involved. And uh, there's a tip sheet for media outreach. And I'll, I'm going to go ahead and call out several of these. I don't really have the time to walk you through every single one of them. But I want to highlight some that I think could be of particular use to, to all of you as you go about the work that you do. Next slide, please. So first and foremost, the talking points, and this is, again, this is, this is not aimed at, 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 you know, this is not something that you would hand off to a parent or a family member. This is really for you. And some of you may already know many of these points. You may be very well versed in um, the incidence of tooth decay and the effects it has on children and families. But this is kind of a one-stop shopping. Uh, it's a, it's a two-page document, front and back, that just walks you uh, through the key messages that stand out, that, that this is the number one chronic disease, that it has significant consequences for a child's health and wellness, um, and that, that cavities are costly, uh, both for families and for states, uh, and Medicaid and CHIP. And so, you know, we really want to um, do what we can to prevent disease because it's not only good for the pocketbook, it's very good for, for children and families, of course. And um, we also make the point on this uh, on this talking points document that dental coverage is so important. You know, that really is the foundation. It opens the door to the services that kids need to stay healthy. Next uh, slide, please. And we have some infographics to share. Uh, this is one that is really aimed at demonstrating all of the different elements that need to be 
playing roles that, that are important roles um, to helping to keep a, a child uh, cavity free in their early years. And um, obviously at the center of it is families. And we, we highlighted families for that very reason, because there are practical steps that moms and dads and, and aunts and uncles can take to keep their kids um, free of tooth decay. Uh, some habits at home, and, and we know that that's a very important thing. So we really wanted to make this uh, really reverberate and sort of build out from the family. And, and there are so many key elements to that. You know, we think of, of dental care and we think of dentists, and dentists are very, very important people in ensuring that kids stay healthy. But there are other people that can play roles too, and we, you know, enumerate some of them on this uh, on this infographic, uh, pediatricians and other medical professionals, um, Head Start staff, different community organizations that help provide wraparound services, um, having a community water system that is fluoridated, you know, um, electronic health records. There's so many different elements, and we just really wanted to kind of give people a sense of this. And I do want to call out um, OBGYNs because we know that there's evidence showing that um, through research, they found that the oral health status of a pregnant woman uh, shapes her child, her newborn's uh, oral health uh, or the risk of tooth decay. So, you know, we, we, we believe that uh, the prevention actually starts with uh, pregnancy and making sure we keep uh, women healthy during that period of time and that their, their teeth and their gums are healthy. Next slide, please. There are different versions of this. So depending on uh, your state or your community or, you know, the population you are reaching out to or uh, acting as a liaison with, we, we have different versions. So if you go to um, ncavities.org, you can access either one of these. And there is another infographic I won't show you at this moment, but just wanted to make sure you understood there are different uh, versions. Next slide, please. And uh, we want to encourage you to reach out and do something that may seem scary to some of you, but um, we think it's worth doing, and that is to reach out to a local editor of a newspaper. It might be a daily paper. It might be a weekly newspaper. Um, it might be at a, a public, uh, an NPR or radio station or affiliate in your area. Um, a lot of radio stations have public affairs programming. They're constantly looking for new topics, and, 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 uh, and they want to be in sync with what's going on in the community. And so this story uh, looks and sounds very different at the local level, and, and I think there is a story to be told. So think about this, because um, not only can you use and borrow and adapt any of the language on end cavities to write letters to the editor or... Uh, commentary pieces that are submitted to a newspaper or for your blogs uh, or e-newsletters. Um, there, uh, there is also a document, Five Tips, and it's located on the It's News page. And it's, it's some tips that can really help you think through, okay, how would I reach out to a local reporter once I, I have their email address? You know, what do I say? And how do I develop a pitch message? There's a sample pitch message in there if you want to raise the issue. Um, so sometimes, you know, there's that direct contact that, that, that you all make to try and raise awareness about the importance of dental coverage and, and coverage overall. But sometimes if we can get stories um, in the media, they help to reinforce that message. So that's why we suggest this. Next slide, please. And of course, I think that uh, the statistic that I, I believe Lori alluded to at the very beginning of the webinar um, is certainly one to share as well. If you're talking to a reporter about the, the importance of coverage and, and what you're finding as you encourage people to, to sign up, some of the confusion that may be out there and so on. Um, but just to let, let them know that uh, two thirds of parents pointed to dental care as being one of the main reasons why they were seeking or signing up for Medicaid or CHIP. Next slide, please. And then I want to encourage all of you to, um, to use social media. You know, many of you work for organizations or nonprofits that, that don't have a lot of um, money laying around somewhere to run advertising campaigns or, or do a lot of the things that, that uh, you know, or other organizations or, or corporations or other companies might be able to do, you, you, know, you really have to make every dollar count. And, um, and one of the things we find with Twitter and Facebook and getting the message out and sharing 
online resources um, it, is that it, it's a real help in that regard. So, um, you know, we would certainly encourage you to use social media. And I think many of you know there is the hashtag Enroll365 that is out there that if you conclude that somewhere in your message, you can make sure that people find your your comment or your, your tweet. Um, and from time to time, uh, we are constantly looking at calendar dates and activities and and um, ways to leverage um, our relationships with different organizations and stakeholders to have social media events. So for example, April is National Minority Health Month, and I suspect we'll be having and being involved in one or more activities that month on Twitter or Facebook. And so if you are interested in in uh, being a part of that to help promote the importance of dental coverage uh, through Medicaid or CHIP, you know, please let me know. My email address is right there. Next slide. So once again, I just want to thank everybody uh, for taking time out of your busy days to, to, to hear about what's going on. And, and one final kind of sign off is any of you who have an, an e-newsletter or blog or anything and you'd like to perhaps uh, put some content up there about end cavities, um, we have some, some sample language that I can share with you. So there's my email address. Just reach out to me. Let me know uh, if you'd like something for an e-newsletter or other activity that you've got going, and, and we can get that to you so you don't, you don't have to spend the time trying to, to write it yourself. Anyway, thanks again. Lori? Great. Thank you, Matt. Uh, some really great resources you've shared with us today, and I want to underline once again that 68% uh, um, statistic you shared with us, um, many of you may not realize that uh, one of the strongest selling points for the product you're trying to sell to parents, I, I kind of think of it that way sometimes, that you're trying to sell parents on signing their kids up for this coverage. Um, one of your strongest selling points is that it does include comprehensive dental coverage. So. Um, we hope that you take advantage of that in your messaging, and Matt shared a lot of ideas with you, um, as well as some very concrete resources that you can use to do that. So, um, next slide, please. Um, our next speaker um, is Debbie Bickford, and Debbie is the Project Director uh, for Coverage for Kids in the Karuk Tribe in California. So, turning the mic over to you, Debbie. Thank you, Lori. Good afternoon. As you can see, my name is Debbie Bickford, and I'm re uh, representing the Karuk Tribe as a project director for the Coverage for Kids campaign. The Karuk Tribal Health Program operates three health clinics that are open to all residents and visitors of the mid klamath River communities. And whether you're traveling north on Highways 1 or 5, once you hit Highway 96, how shall I put it, we're two hours past nowhere. So you know that our resources are limited. Um, before I get started, I'd like to give credit where credit is due. A lot of these ideas that we've used um, have come from the insurekids.gov website, um, specifically the game plan and make a kid smile. And then we just tweaked everything um, to fit our needs. And we often collaborate with Family Resource Center and with TANF programs. Next slide, please. Are you working hard but still getting the same old results? being told, we don't need your help, we have tribal insurance, we're already covered, I don't want anything from the government, my tribe takes care of me. Well, the fact is, children still need regular dental care to maintain healthy teeth, and dental insurance is the most cost-effective way to obtain annual checkups and regular dental care. There is a shortage of dental professionals in the rural Native communities, and a good percentage of those who need that dental care the most are the ones who do not respond to outreach efforts. Next slide, please. So I say it's time to think outside of the box. Um, one of the best resources here is to talk to teachers and administrators um, to help you zero in on what the needs of the community are. Here's a specific case. A child is not allowed to attend after school activities because of behavior problems and he's constantly being sent to the office because of those behavior problems, but also because his teeth hurt. Parent claims that he has Medi-Cal, but he doesn't take him to the dentist because they don't have a car or whatever other excuse he comes up with. Solution, we planned a one-day soccer event that I knew that specific child would like to attend. 
the registration form required a copy of insurance or Medi-Cal card to be attached to the application. That parent did sign him up for Medi-Cal prior to the event so he could play, and he has now been to the dentist. So think for a moment, what would work in your local school? Next slide, please. Again, thinking outside of the box. One day when I was visiting a school, I noticed um, on a regular basis a specific child was always hungry, and any time there was food, she was interested. However, when she ate, she went, even though she never complained, and to me it appeared she needed to see a dentist. The solution? We developed a healthy food recipe contest. This, the, um, this contest consists of a team made up of a child and an adult of choice. And if the recipe is selected, the cafeteria will prepare in advance for a family night event. And that team will demonstrate to the audience how to prepare that healthy dish. And then it's served with a salad bar and ice water to drink with no dessert. The admission will be proof of insurance or Medi-Cal gets the whole family in free of charge. In our town, food is a big deal. All right, um, next slide, please. However, our favorite outreach event was Make a Kid Smile Day with the Tooth Fairy at the Siskiyou County Fair. We're lucky enough to be able to offer dental services at each of our clinics. If your tribe or clinic does not offer dental services, you'll need to knock on some doors and meet those local dentists, offices, and the, the clinics. Remind them it's free advertising and it's a great way to welcome new patients. So on our event, um, the purpose was to promote free dental checkups before school started and sign families up for Medi-Cal. The Tooth Fairy got lots of attention. We allowed families to take pictures with the Tooth Fairy, and our Tooth Fairy came dressed in a cute little le uh, leotard and tutu with pretty wings and a tiara. The kids' mouths dropped. They were so excited. Next slide, please. The manning of this booth needs to be somewhat outgoing um, and able to reach out to people as they walk by. So you need a person who's actually signing people up, scheduling them as, in addition to the tooth fairy, although she can be of help. When traffic was slow, our tooth fairy actually took a basket with our handout. We had little um, tooth necklaces where they're plastic and they open up so if the child's tooth is loose and falls out, they put it in the little necklace and carry it so that they don't lose it before they go home. And we gave out those little wind-up chompy teeth and uh, dental timers and all kinds of things. Um, and so the Tooth Fairy took some of those out, encouraged families to stop by our booth, and invited them to sign up for a free drawing for youth portable basketball hoop, which got a lot of attention also. Once captive, we set appointments, handed them a reminder card with a promise to call and remind them the night before or morning of their appointment since we were at the fair from Wednesday through Sunday and the appointments were for the Monday after the fair. We were able to, sit, to fill 60 slots in our Wairika Clinic, the same town as the fair. Of these 60, there were eight no-shows, most without phones for us to call to remind them. I signed up six children for Medi-Cal. It doesn't seem like much, but it is 10% of the crowd that we wrangled in. Next slide, please. As with all projects, it's necessary to develop a work plan with deadlines. I always start by brainstorming all of the things I need to accomplish as well as all the materials I need to order. Then I schedule according to what must be done immediately, such as requesting a check and submitting the application, as well as ordering all the handouts. By the way, you can order a gross of Tooth Fairy necklaces for $7.50. That's pretty inexpensive. Be sure to also check out RetailMeNot.com for promotions that offer free delivery or discounts um, to your order. Always order one month in advance to allow time for back orders, and always check the clearance items first. You can also check with dentist offices who will be participating with you. They may have some toothbrushes, timers, etc., that they can donate to the cause. Children love handouts. Here is a sample. Oh, sorry. Um, next slide, please. Here is a. Uh, simple schedule module that I also made from an Excel spreadsheet. We scheduled one child per 30 minutes with four rooms available. When there were multiple, multiple children from one family who needed to be scheduled together, we color-coded so that there would be less confusion if there was a no-show or a walk-in, and we had both. White indicated that there was a single child. 
And we actually had a teen mom come in with her three-year-old, so we got two for the price of one. Next slide, please. Here are a few tips to remember. Be patient. Don't take it personally. Have fun. Do something a little different. No two children or set of parents are alike. Be flexible with your schedule. If you do what you've always done, you will continue to get the same results. And remember, you are doing it for the children. Next slide, please. Thank you for your time. I'm more than happy to share any information should anyone, anyone want copies of the schedule, the task list, et cetera. And feel free to email me or call me, and I'd love to help you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Debbie. Um, those were just some amazing stories you shared uh, and such great creativity going on out in your part of the world. Um, thank you for sharing all those approaches with us, and it was especially exciting that it came with a real-life tooth fairy. Um, <laughs> and thanks for the picture of the real-life tooth fairy. That was a special treat. Okay. Um, just a reminder, to if you have questions as we're going along, please go ahead and enter them into the question box, um, and we'll, just, we'll get to those questions in just a couple more minutes. Um, I wanted to close out the presentations today um, by uh, reminding you about the variety of free resources that are available to you through the Connecting Kids to Coverage campaign, uh, in addition to all these resources that have been shared um, from our other presenters. We have print materials, uh, template social media content, uh, customizable uh, materials as well. Um, and they're all available in our online resource library. Next slide. So uh, one item is our Think Teeth oral health education materials. Um, you can see some of them here. This isn't all the ones we have available. Uh, they are posters as well as tear pads. Um, they are available um, in bulk uh, and in both English and Spanish. Um, there are three versions of them. One is focused on little kids. Um, it's the one you see with the toddler on the left. Uh, one is focused on uh, pregnant women. Um, and another one, which you'll see the image of in a moment, is focused on um, older kids. So uh, these are uh, available for free and we've given you the link here where you can uh, order them. It takes about two to three weeks to get them if you so you need to plan in advance. And the idea um, is these are for parents uh, and families. Uh, they can be used by any kind of community-based organization and also by physicians uh, to hand out to their patients. Next slide. They're also customizable. So here's the one that uh, is focused on older kids. Um, you can uh, take them as is for free, uh, or you can customize them with your organization's uh, logo or contact information. Um, and again, we've provided you with the link. The one little wrinkle that I want to make you aware of um, is that if you do decide to customize them, uh, you will get a PDF of the customized material, which then you will be responsible for printing or paying to have printed. Next slide, please. Um, we also have um, on the oral health section of our website um, various template materials. We have web banners and buttons that you can use uh, on your websites. We have social media graphics. Uh, we have language for Facebook and Twitter posts. And we have a sample copy for you to, for you to use if you have newsletters or blogs. Um, we've got it all written for you, and you can just cut and paste. And there's the link for uh, where you can find those materials online. Next slide. We've also produced a one-page flyer that is intended for parents with special health care needs. Uh, finding a dentist who is the appropriate type of caregiver for a child with special health care needs can be a challenge. Um, every child has their individual needs, 
and not every dentist is prepared to meet those individual needs. So this flyer um, walks a parent through um, how to locate a dentist in their community and how to call in advance before making an appointment and how to walk through some questions to try to determine uh, whether this dentist is the right one for your child. Next slide, please. All of our outreach videos and, and the previous webinars, um, there's a, a monthly webinar with this campaign, um, and all of the recordings of those webinars are available in the Resource Center on the Insure Kids Now website. Uh, the recording of this webinar will also be added to that resource. In addition, we have an outreach video library, um, and these are very short videos that showcase a variety of outreach and enrollment promising practices from groups around the country. Uh, for instance, and this uh, photo that you're seeing right here um, is from the video where we partnered with uh, the organization called Public Citizens for Children and Youth uh, in Philadelphia, and they have a Kid Smiles um, program there and we worked with them to create a video to show how organizations can help enroll eligible children in Medicaid and CHIP um, while bringing them in for free dental services, um, similar to what um, Debbie also described. So check out those videos. Next slide, please. In addition, uh, we, can, we offer you uh, a dentist locator. Um, this is a really cool tool. Uh, find a dentist for your kid. Um, this is a national tool that has the name and address and phone number um, of every dentist in the country who accepts Medicaid and CHIP. Um, on the left, what you see is, is a little widget um, that anybody can download and post on their website. Um, and it's a shortcut way into the tool. All you need to do is say what your state is and then what your Medicaid plan is that your kid is enrolled in um, and what your zip code is and click search and you'll get a whole list of dentists that uh, accept that plan and that are in your community. Um, on the uh, Insure Kids Now website there is a more expanded consumer interface which is what you see on the right um, where you can uh, specify different details including such things as whether your child has a special health care need um, or whether you prefer a language other than English uh, to be available in the office uh, where you take your child. So this is a terrific tool. Um, it is maintained by the federal government. States are required to update the information in it at least once every three months. Um, and we're really proud of the quality of information um, in there and encourage you um, to get the word out about it in your communities and to use it yourself. Next slide, please. There are several ways you can stay up to date uh, with the latest Medicaid and CHIP outreach strategies and stay connected to the Connecting Kids to Coverage campaign. Um, you can sign up for our campaign e-newsletters. Uh, they are distributed by email throughout the year and they provide updates on campaign activities. We also want to hear from you. So if you have questions for us or you want to share um, an outreach or an enrollment story, um, any anything that uh, you want to share with us, we really want to hear about it. So here's our email inbox, connectingkids at cms.hhs.gov. Um, please, please send us a message. Next slide, please. So to expand your outreach, um, you can connect with our campaign's social media. Uh, if you follow IKNGov on Twitter. Um, that's where we share our campaign updates and our new resources. And you can share those across your social media channels. And don't forget, um, as, as Matt mentioned to you, that you can tag all of your posts using Enroll 365 and Medicaid and CHIP and Think Teeth. Those are all um, hashtags that uh, will help us track um, what's going on in social media and help get the word out more broadly. Next slide, please. Okay, good. So we've arrived at the question and answer portion. Um, 
we can see that there's a whole bunch of questions um, that have been entered in. I'm going to turn the mic back over to Erin to facilitate our Q&A session. Erin? Thank you so much, Lori, and thank you to the other speakers for the great content you provided today. Um, we've got several questions here from you all. Thank you so much for submitting those questions. Um, the first question I'll really open up to all the folks on the line for um, any best practices that they may have. Uh, the question is, although I know this webinar is focused on dental health access for children, um, we know that parents are also likely to enroll. And if the parents also enroll, what resources are there to persuade not just the children um, for oral health, but also the adults as well? So how um, any best practices you might have on getting um, the entire family access to dental care? Well, uh, this is Laurie. I should jump in and just um, uh, provide a little bit of context that um, Medicaid, uh, whether Medicaid covers dental services for adults varies by state. Um, it is a state decision, um, unlike for dental care for kids, states are required to cover dental care for kids. But um, states, it's, it's optional for states to cover our, our dental care for adults. So one thing that would be important for you to understand before you um, um, take a step in this direction um, is what type of dental care is covered for adults in your state. Um, that information is available, and um, I can uh, share a link with Erin uh, to send out to all of today's webinar attendees so that you have a quick reference uh, to see what's covered in your state. Um, then once you know that, I think um, you'll understand whether you should go ahead and make this a central part of your campaign. If your state Medicaid agency does cover dental care for adults, I think it's a terrific idea. Um, I, there have been studies that have shown uh, that if uh, adults have coverage, children are more likely to get care and vice versa. So. Um, and then the one, the one resource I have to offer you is, is uh, the Think Teeth um, tear pad for pregnant women. Um, that would be one way to connect with a slice of the adult population. Um, many pregnant women have uh, older children, um, and so that would be a way into the conversation uh, for those folks. Anyone else have yeah. pointers to offer? This is Jane Grover, and that's a that's a great uh, those are great comments and suggestions, Lori. Uh, coming from the health center world, and also um, knowing that ADA initiatives, many state dental associations can serve as uh, resources for people who are looking for family centric care, and they can also connect you with primary care associations and community health centers. Uh, that have a variety of opportunities for family-centric care. And you're absolutely correct. When the parents are getting care, uh, the children also get care. So there are some wonderful models out there that are really working. Great. Thank you to you both. Um, the next question is um, asking about infographics. So what's the difference between infographics and maybe other social media tools? And um, I'll expand on that question a little bit and, and um, ask folks to share best practices in using infographics. Matt, I know that was a specific part of your presentation, so you may want to jump in here. Sure. Um, infographics are a very popular item on uh, social media. And for example, on Twitter, they are a common hashtag. A lot of people will put a hashtag right in front of the word infographic because they know there, there are a number of people out there who are actively searching for infographics, um, either based on the topic or just to see how people are creating visualizations of data and other facts. So um, it is, uh, there's, some evidence that it does improve engagement, that if you um, promise to share either through a, an attachment or you display in your message on Twitter or Facebook a, uh, an infographic, that it makes people more likely to click and open it up and to, you know, just stop and read. So I think that, that encourages people to use them 
in that way to promote them and share them through social media. Um, I, I think that's that's sort of one thing I would say. Um, and there, you may even uh, be aware of this already, but there are actually some tools online. Um, there's one piece of software called PictoChart. Um, I'm not connected to them in any way, full disclosure. And there are other sites as well that actually are are, are getting a little better. They still don't look quite as sophisticated as you know working with a uh, a full fledged designer, but but allowing people to create their own infographics. So it's it's become quite a quite a thing. Great, thank you, Matt. And in that same vein, uh, we had a question if these materials from each of the organizations are available uh, in other languages. Uh, we know uh, at ADA we have several um, resources that are in Spanish, uh, and those are available to the public. And the Think Teeth mm -hmm. materials are available in both um, English and Spanish, but um, unfortunately not in other languages. Yeah, I, I can't say that we have um, materials right now on in cavities that are in Spanish. Part of that, um, a little bit of that, is that they weren't designed so much as, as kind of a consumer-targeted outreach, but working more with stakeholders. But we do recognize that there are stakeholders out there that would like to see them in different languages. We are exploring uh, an adaptation of, of some of them to Spanish. So, um, you know, please uh, stay tuned. That, that may be coming. Great. Thank you all. Um, we had a question about the type of care that um, we should be talking about when doing this outreach. Uh, specifically, when targeting children, should the focus be on promoting comprehensive care or preventative care for them? Well, I think that, <laughs> that's a great, great question. question. Go ahead, Jane. <laughs> well, I was going to say that, of course, the, the ultimate goal is that children have a dental home. And many times, the conversation may begin with prevention information. Uh, and, and again, the age one dental visit is, is a prime example of that. Uh, and the fact is that we can't just rely on preventive services alone because we know we have children that have some very urgent needs. And so it's a, advantageous for them to have a dental home so that treatment plans can be tracked to completion so that children that have needs and unrestored uh, decay uh, can get comprehensive care. But many times the lead in the conversation will start with preventive care because uh, I'm sure everyone on the webinar may agree that we don't have as much conversation in our society about oral health as we do about some other aspects of health. And we know that oral health is integral to overall health. So we've got some opportunities to capitalize on and the conversation generally begins with prevention. And I would um, mostly agree with what you just said, Jane. Um, I think to the extent that you are organizing events that talk about oral health and seek to educate the community about oral health, you should definitely focus on prevention because so many families are not aware that really their children's oral health is in many ways in their hands. Um, what the oral care that's happening at home, uh, whether they're uh, – drinking uh, fluoridated water, um, whether they, uh, how they're spacing uh, their sugar intake for their children. You know, there's so much that uh, families can do at home to protect their children's oral health. Um, so there's a huge educational piece that goes on there. On the other hand, if your goal is to interest a parent in signing up for Medicaid or CHIP, uh, so that their child has insurance, um, your, uh, they may be most interested in the sort of immediate uh, frame uh, in getting dental coverage because they know their child has a dental issue um, and that they've been putting off uh, taking their child to the dentist because they don't have coverage. So I think it depends on the setting and what you're trying to accomplish, but I think very often parents would be uh, grabbed by the idea that, uh, oh, I know my kid needs dental care. I feel like a bad parent because I haven't been getting them to the dentist. Here's a way that I can accomplish that. 
Great. And, you know, as a follow-up question to that, um, you know, I think that the, the, we asked specifically about the type of care, but also what age should parents uh, be prioritizing dental health for children as um, you're looking to reach those target audiences? Jane, I'll let you have that one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, when the first teeth start erupting in the mouth, we, we have partnered with the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry and also the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, for the age one dental exam, the age one dental visit. And the opportunities can really start with uh, pregnant women to talk about oral health before the baby arrives. And we also, through interprofessional relations and CAPER, want to engage uh, physicians to have this conversation with patients so that that oral health message is, is being supported uh, from the medical world as well. And Lori, I know you've got some comments on that too. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of the work that we do here at CMS is to uh, raise the level of participation by pediatricians. Um, children go to the pediatrician so much more often than they go to the dentist, um, both for well child checkups as well as for sick care visits. And so we think that the uh, pediatrician's office is a very uh, important place for parents to get educated about the importance of oral health from the very earliest ages, from those you know, very first uh, baby visits um, and on through early childhood. Um, as I mentioned in, in one of my slides, um, if the disease gets uh, uh, established in a child's mouth um, at an early age, uh, under three, uh, it is likely to be a lifelong problem. So um, I would vote for uh, emphasizing the importance of prevention and getting that dental home established um, in those very earliest ages. Very often uh, we think about partnering with schools um, as a great place to reach children. Um, and, and it is a great rate place to reach kids. Um, but usually by the time we can reach them there, they're already like five years old. Um, so we need to be thinking creatively about how to partner with uh, daycare centers, um, WIC. Uh, WIC programs are a fabulous place um, to uh, reach mothers and very young children uh, with the oral health message um, to get get that message out at those very earliest ages. Great, thank you to you both. And I think we'll just um, um, end here with, with one last question. Um, and you know, Debbie, I think this question, um, you know, might make sense for you, but of course want, want everyone to jump in here. Um, the question was, what has been your biggest barrier to enrolling in oral health to, that you've heard from people um, and getting access to oral health care? And how have you solved that? You know, I think, Debbie, you have uh, and had some really creative strategies, but, but what have you heard from folks on the ground about why um, they haven't been able to get children uh, access to oral health care? And, and, you know, what have you done to, um, you know, get them that access? Well, I had one father, a single father, um, who did not have custody of his children, but they were the most important thing to him. And this is for Medi-Cal, not necessarily dental only. But he refused um, to apply for anything. He didn't want the government to know anything. And so I convinced him to meet with me, and I told him that at any time we could stop the process and delete the application because I do everything online. And um, I told him I only put in the information that's required. I don't put anything else in there. And at any time, I will stop. And when we were done, he goes, that's it? And I said, that's it. And he says, I've been fighting this for all these years. But my, my, the way I got him in was, well, before you can, I, from what I hear you saying, your children are the most important thing to you in the world. And you can't take care of those children until you take care of yourself. So let's get your needs met so that you can be the father you want to be. And so that's how I got him in. And it wasn't for dental reasons. It was for other reasons. But I use kind of that perspective as I meet one-on-one -on -one with families um, when they're hesitant to, to sign up for anything. The unknown frightens everyone. And uh, so making sure they understand they're the most important person to me at the time I'm talking to them 
and that will stop at any time, and I'll help them through the whole process, is able to um, sign up those who are hesitant. And that was really so, a, a that wonderful really message. answer your question, but mm -hmm. that's, that's how I handle it. So, And with dental, it's usually just a matter of the families being lazy or there not being enough doctors, uh, dentists. Um, I, we provided free dental checkups for all of the elementary schools, and there's two of the two larger ones I work with, there's almost 1,000 children between the two schools. And um, when we did the free checkups, it was discovered there were 150 emergency cases for dental alone, and there were no dentists to see them. The parents were having to take the children to the emergency room to get uh, antibiotics and pain pills, and then um, some of them, I actually went to the school one day and sat and helped one or two families get Medi-Cal signed up um, so that they could go to the dentist when they could actually get an appointment. And fortunately, one of the local hospitals opened up a dental unit, so the pressure's off a little bit. Um, this is this is Laurie. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, thank you for those stories. It's it's heart heart wrenching sometimes. Um, the difficulties families face, and, and I just wanted to remind you that um, after a family gets uh, coverage, sometimes it, it is a challenge to find a dentist to accept their Medi-Cal or CHIP coverage, and that's why our um, dentist locator um, can be so very helpful. Um, the other thing I wanted to make sure you all are aware of is that states uh, have an obligation um, under Medicaid law to um, assure access to non-emergency transportation services. Um, so if your family, uh, if you have a family that cannot get to a dentist, um, either because the, the dentist is across town and they don't have a car, or say the dentist is in the next town over um, because there is no participating dentist in your town, um, the Medicaid agency will have some process in place uh, to arrange for transportation and to pay for that transportation uh, if the the parent and the child or children uh, need transportation to the dentist, if that's a barrier for them. Great. Thank you so much to everyone for uh, the questions, your participation, and to our speakers for the fantastic content today. Um, we'll be following up with a lot of these resources that were mentioned on the call today through our e-newsletter. And also this webinar will be posted to the insurekidsnow.gov website. Um, and if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to connect again with the campaign at um, connectingkids at cms.hhs.gov. Thank you again and have a great afternoon.